Good morning. Welcome to the Renewed in Christ Co-op Service, May 17th, the sixth Sunday of Easter. If you need a bulletin, please call 717-939-4998. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Take a couple minutes to just breathe in the love that Christ has for you and repeat those words out loud. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And then we will begin our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people. Turning us from our sin to live for you alone, give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and, and also, also with you. you. Halle, 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 luya. Halle, 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 luya. Halle, 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 luya. Halle, luya, halle. be with you and, and also with you. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from the 17th chapter of Acts, verses 22 to 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. 
What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed, he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm today is Psalm 66. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us you have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our hearts. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings at fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I called out to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayers. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 33. Who will harm you if you, you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it's better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides in you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Love is mighty and so much stronger. Grace, mercy. 
mercy and peace from God our Father and His only Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's coming. It's coming fast. It's always coming. What's coming? The future. Some of us prepare for it in a variety of ways. Others of us let it come upon them. You know, kind of go with the flow, which is one of our key phrases here in the Renewed in Grace Co-op. But it is uh, for our understanding of the future and the mysteries there related that we have philosophy and religion. And that was especially true in Paul's day, and the philosophies and religions were all over the city of Athens. Paul saw many gods and many statues and many idols. And as he walked around, it was almost like a smorgasbord. Pick whichever one you want. But he noticed then that there was a statue to an unknown god. I guess people wanted to make sure everything was covered, so there was even an unknown God. And Paul would then talk about the searching, which he called groping, that happens as we try to figure out our way in the world and what makes sense to us. And it's true for us even today. How many of us are groping for meaning and understanding? And we look to thoughts and philosophies and religion to provide us the answers. For some folks, it's a continual process. I remember a friend of mine who continually joined churches, expecting to hear a message of salvation of one church he wasn't hearing in another. And he continued to search. Or I remember a good many folks during the 60s and 70s started looking at Eastern religions. And a lot of them became Hare Krishnas. And the interesting thing is that like the Greeks, we're looking for new things, at least new to us. But almost everything we come up to with is something someone's already talked about. And sometimes we find ultimate realities in other ways. I can remember serving in poor neighborhoods and the fight we had to keep kids from joining gangs because they found something there. And it's not just in poor neighborhoods. Look at the folks who turn to drugs. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor in order to find some answers. And it isn't always negative. A lot of times, folks will look to the latest self-help guru and hope that that person can provide answers. You see, we want something that's all in it. We want to answer questions. And we want to find our way. Back to Corinth. Paul was very good at taking whatever information he had and making a statement about the faith. And notice what he does. He's chased out of one place. He's now in Athens. And he finds this was the ideal situation for him to talk about that which was closest to his heart, and hopefully ours. And that's the power of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he uses his imagination, intellect, if you will, and sees, okay, if there is a statue to an unknown God that nobody knows about, then I've got an explanation for the folks at Corinth, and an explanation for us as we grow and the God we want to look at is a real God, not invented, but a real God. And we don't create this God, we don't make him, we don't imagine our God. Instead, God is the one who creates us. And if we're looking for ultimate explanations to make sense out of life, because ultimately we are, the God that we worship, is the God who raised Jesus from the dead. Now Paul understood that a lot of folks in Athens did not understand that. But still, he wanted to make the message plain. Because the real God is the one that provides the answers. The real God is the one that gives life. 
You know, a lot of times we're searching for things just to survive, and other times we're searching for that meaning that will make life complete. And to Paul, that is what, exactly what the Christian message does for us. Because we really live in an uncertain world, don't we? I mean, who would have ever thought that in March, April, and now May, we'd be dealing with this virus that has turned our world upside down. And in life, the future is always coming, and we can't always know how to deal with it. Cute little story. Bart Johnson, who many of you know, is not only a member of St. Peter's and a council member, but also the secretary here at Trinity. And I remember her talking to me about her youngest son, Mac, planning his wedding. And when she told me what the day was, it was a day in February. And I got to thinking to myself, boy, in my experience, anytime you plan something for the winter months, you're always dealing with problematic weather situations. And I hoped that Matt's wedding would not end up as a weather casualty. Well, Matt planned it in February, married his wonderful wife, Cassie, and the day was wonderful. And now I look at a February wedding and think, it's really good that he didn't plan it for the spring or the summer because it would really be questionable. And you see, we never really know what the future will bring. And that can cause us concern and frustration. And so we look for dealing with the unknown and for that unknown God. Except for us, we know that life has stability because of our faith in Jesus Christ. For after all, as Paul makes the point, the one who can give life and make sense out of life and get us through our situation to meet that unknown future is the one who raised Jesus from the dead. And so, as we continue to deal with life and the future that's upon us, trying to figure out what the next step is, God will be there with us and provide for us through Jesus Christ. And we can be sure of that. The foundation, the rock for us now as we meet the days ahead. And so we can look at our lives in the present and in the future with a hope because we always stand within the presence of God. Which as Paul reminds us that even when we are unaware that he is around us, he is still present. And so we don't have to grope, we don't have to search, because we know that the love of God is all around us. And so may that peace of Christ that passes all our understanding, let that keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection. We join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church 
as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way. This week, especially, we remember Tina Spangler and Nancy Bruner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Today, we especially remember Ray Stoner, a longtime member of Trinity, who passed away earlier this week. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. It is with bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.